Good morning all. So today we are going to see how to measure the temperature rise in a transformer. So you will ask why it is required. So if you take the transformer, particularly in the summer region where the transformer continuously operates under full load conditions, so much heat will be produced. So if you don't know how much heat is produced, there is a chance that because of the heat, the transformer may spoil, the transformer oil may burn or the transformer may spoil. So it is essential to know how much will be the temperature rise and whether my oil can withstand that much temperature rise or not or whether my transformer can withstand that much temperature rise or not and what are the consequences of rise in the temperature in a transformer. So for that if you want to test it in a laboratory, so the simple or conventional way is take a transformer, supply it at the rated voltage and the load will be connected to the secondary. The load will be equal to the full load whatever is the full load rating of the transformer that much load will be connected and because of the full load the corresponding full load current will pass in the secondary as well as in the primary. So here uh, the primary power that is required to supply will be the total power or rated power of the transformer which will be very huge particularly for the case of power transformers so which is very difficult to supply in laboratory and the second one the load dissipates the power so that dissipating the heat to the surroundings is very difficult in the laboratory and the second one the designing the load corresponding to full load itself is very difficult in the laboratory and moreover to test the rise in the temperature then the transformer runs for 24 to 48 hours to know the temperature rise of the transformer so this is practically not possible so to avoid this problem so we go for a test called as back to back test or sampras test in back to back or sampras test we use two identical transformers the two identical transformers will be connected in such a way the primaries are connected in parallel and secondaries are connected series opposition so with this the primary whatever the transformers are connected there whatever instruments are connected they measure the total iron losses or they supply the iron losses required for the transformer and the secondaries which are connected in series opposition they are supplied by some voltage source that supplies the copper loss total copper loss required for these two transformers or in other sense the total power taken from the supply will be for only supplying the losses that is iron losses and copper losses in the transformer and the advantage is there is no requirement of load there is no requirement of use value of power which should be transmitted only we have to transmit the power corresponding to total losses in the transformer so only limitation of that method is two identical transformers will be required that we are going to see what is Sampras back to back test and how it is connected let us see the connection for Sampras back to back test so for Sampras back to back test there will be a supply voltage so AC supply voltage will be there that AC supply voltage will be connected to the primaries of two transformers the primaries of two transformers are connected in such a way let us assume as per dot notation this is my dot and this is my dot we have already seen the dot notation the dot indicates if the current is entering the dot of both the transformer we can tell they are in magnetic heating condition so this will be connected in such a way that both rods are connected together let us assume this is connected like this and this one is here so same way this will also be connected so these two are connected like this so and the secondary side are connected in such a way they are connected in phase opposition let us assume this is my dot and the second one will be connected in such a way they are in dot of position as well as they are connected in series so these two are connected in such a way if the current is entering here and the current is leaving from the second one that means they are having the magnetic opposing polarity and they are connected in series so automatically the resultant voltage at the output if we take the output voltage the output voltage is measured here using the voltmeter v2 let us assume in this the emf induced is plus minus here in this emf induced will be plus minus here so if you are connecting them so the net voltage will be equal to zero volts that means it is connected in phase opposition so we'll always measure the value of v2 always which s will be in open circuit only primaries are connected secondaries are connected in phase opposition and then we measure the voltage v2 if let us assume v2 is showing two times the the secondary terminal voltage or two times the rated voltage that means they are connected in series that means series aiding position so what we have to do we have to interchange the terminals in such a way that v2 will become equal to zero so let us assume now v2 is equal to zero primaries are connected this is just equivalent to a open circuit test so we know in the open circuit test the primary only supplies the uh, iron loss component so here two transformers are connected in parallel so it will supply the iron losses of these two transformers let us assume iron loss of each one is wi so this total wattmeter reading w1 will show two times of pi 
where pi p sub x i is the iron loss of each transformer. Now the current through this will be two times the no load current of each transformer and V1 will be the supply voltage. Again let us repeat as this is connected in phase opposition so the secondary can be considered as open circuit so the primary will draw the current from the supply the current that is only sufficient to supply for the iron loss component because we have seen this in the no load test in the no load test it takes only the iron loss so this total current taken will be the sum of the no load components of both the transformers because both the transformers are identical it takes the current two times of i naught and the power will be equal to two times the iron loss of each transformer so the total thing is measured here so this measures the no load code. so otherwise we can tell that the primary supplies the no load now what i will do we will close the switch s and while closing the switch s this auto transformer is used for changing the voltage we can see here when this is connected here the voltage will be zero when this is connected as we is moving up the voltage impressed across these two terminals will increase initially this will be connected at zero position and the switch s is closed and when the switch s is closed as this voltage is zero so no voltage is injected to this so there is no change now what we do gradually we change this in such a way this ammeter a2 will measure my full load secondary current so this measures the full load secondary current this is just adjusted in such a way full load secondary current will pass through this now the current how it will pass it will pass from here it will go through this winding and return back from this winding Okay, now whenever the current is passing in this winding, accordingly EMF will be induced in the primary. So the EMF induced in the, in the primary will be, here you can see the current is entering the dot, but in this case the current is leaving the dot. So same way it will produce here, because here the current is leaving the dot, here current will leave the dot. And here the current is entering the dot, let us assume, here also the current enters the dot. Let us assume it is produced like this. That means the current that is produced will pass like this. So it will flow in this direction, it will flow like this. So from here, it will flow like this and here. So you can see the current that is induced in secondary because of full load current passing in this side will be only circulating among these two primaries. It is not passing through the primary watt meter or the primary ammeter. That's why these components are independent. So we can tell that whatever current is passing through this, it is supplying the copper losses in these two windings as well as copper losses in these two windings also. So that's why we can tell this supplies, this secondary supplies the full load copper losses of both the windings. This is nothing but something like a short circuit test where the secondaries are short circuited and the primaries are supplied with the required current. So the wattmeter reading 2 will read 2 times my full load copper loss. So copper losses corresponding to full load. So we can tell in the sumpress back to back test we are supplying the iron loss component in the primary side and copper losses which are required in the secondary side. As they are connected in phase opposition, there is no need to supply any extra load. Actually, they are fully loaded because they are carrying the full load current in both primary and secondary as well as no load component of current. So that means the continuously the heat is produced without loading them. That's why this is also called as back to back test or regenerative test because we are not connecting any load but we are loading them. So in order to test for how much heat is produced in a transformer, what we do, we just connect the transformers in this position and leave it for 24 to 48 hours, depending on after how much time I want to test. After that, we measure the temperature of the transformer. So only limitation of this method is we need two transformers of identical rating. That is the first limitation. And the second limitation is if you observe clearly here in these windings, the no load current, the no load current is coming like this. The no load current is entering. This is my no load current in this transformer because it is entering like this and passing. Whereas in this case, the no load current will be passing in same direction as the full load current. So in this case, the net current is the difference of the two currents. That means current that is responsible for full load copper loss and no load component of current. Only difference of the current is passing in the secondary winding. But in this case, the sum of the components here current will be equal to IFL plus I naught in one transformer. And in another transformer, it is IFL minus I0. So because of difference in the current, the copper losses will be different. That means they are producing different heat. But practically, we know the value of I0 is very less. So this effect can be neglected. So there is no issue with this. Only disadvantage is two identical transformers are required in this case. I hope you understand it clearly. So thank you very much.